was a deputy minister of the government of Indonesia, and um, he has been very active in the domain of climate change and biodiversity conservation. Professor Daniel, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the WIDF for inviting me to this very prestigious and important gathering. It's today, uh, Tuesday, a topic which is very much in my heart. So uh, it's a good opportunity to share with you about what we've been doing uh, so far. When I was sitting there, I whispered to Dr. Rahman, Three of us here were our veterans in climate change. We've been in a number of negotiations since the 90s. So uh, today I'm, I'm back in my habitat with these veterans and try to share with you what we've been doing in the area of climate change and education and education. Can I have the first slide, please? Uh, run it from here, I think. So the, the topic is very um, appealing, how to combat climate change. And I intentionally put the second uh, sub-topic uh, in this very uh, audience where business economics that we discuss, right, will be discussed very extensively, is adaptation out of business. So the reason of putting this in the title is really to try to see how we can link adaptation, which is very much neglected with mitigation to, uh, of climate change. So I'm looking forward to have your reaction how this uh, Synergy between mitigation and adaptation will be uh, processed in the future. So, as research organization C4, where I belong to, I'm, I'm wearing the hats today. One is the university, and second is an international organization dealing with uh, forestry research. And we've been putting climate change in our research agenda very seriously in the past three, four years. Especially if you look at the synergy between climate change, adaptation, and mitigation very, very seriously because one cannot see this thing in a separation. We cannot talk about adaptation without knowing what mitigation is all about and the other way around. The uh, issue of climate change so mitigation has been very attractive for many countries, and in many developing countries, and as a reason of adaptation has been very much neglected. And it is very important to Secondly, it has to be mainstream in our developing our development agenda. So as this organization, we try to look at it in a this manner of education and adaptation. In the UNF C, where we've been the veterans of it, uh, it's very common to look at them in such a way that mitigation is seen as a response to climate change causes or the source of climate change. So if you look at this um, arrow, sorry on the left hand side, this is the way mitigation is done and we respond through adaptation when we deal with the impacts. So in a sense adaptation is development issue. Mitigation is attacking the problem from the source, but adaptation is something to do with what's happening today and how to respond to that. It's very difficult in, in real life to explain the difference between adaptation and mitigation, but uh, just to give you an idea, this is like a, driving a car. If you know you are going to hit something in front of you, uh, you have to hit the brake, and that is mitigation. Cool. So we respond to the cause of disaster by hitting the brake. But whether or not we are going to hit the wall, for example, we have to put the, the seatbelt 
and that is adaptation. So, by having the two of them, hopefully we will be driving safely and, and response to potential damage to planet. Driving. Something that we have to remind right at the beginning. Even in the development issues, we have to do adaptation as part of the development. As a research organization, sometimes it's difficult to convince policymakers how to deal with it because adaptation is such an unattractive action in the development agenda, unlike mitigation. So this is a very new issue in our developing worlds, including Indonesia and I think also the same for Malaysia and many other developing countries. So, uh, in terms of program and project as a research organization, we intend to do good adaptation and mitigation in one pocket in terms of developing research agenda. And starting from last year, we tried to look at weapons as an example of how we can put together adaptation and mitigation in one research agenda. We call it total weapons that we have for climate adaptation and mitigation. Twin if you Google Twin Cap, you will come up with a fast engine that is quite modern engine in the automotive, automotive industries. But Twin Cap is a, a nickname for a project which was started last year. And to begin with, we try to do what uh, Dr. Rahman mentioned, it's important to get that it is the very investment we want to do as business organizations with colleagues who are keen to look at climate change communication and adaptation, especially in the development of including Hitland and also Mangroves, which is very important especially in the So we try to equip our partners with necessary tools and also uh, methodology to deal and to do the assessment of climate change mitigation and adaptation. We develop a network to design collaborative research and we try to convey our message to the private as well as the public sector. So this is one of the examples we did last year and published in a public literature uh, quite extensively uh, recognize how important it is to have this kind of assessment. If you look at the uh, chart on the right hand side, this is the carbon stock, the amount of carbon in mangroves across the university, including the Sudaba, very important mangrove ecosystem in Bangladesh. The amount of carbon stored in this ecosystem, especially below the dark uh, area here, is more than four times than any uh, ecosystem in the world, including dense tropical forests. So this is very important findings, and it uh, is useful to know that the ecosystem we have next to us is very important for climate change. So this message was sent across and very immediately we got a response that protecting mangrove is very important for climate change adaptation, mitigation. What about adaptation? So we tried very hard to really understand the issue of mangrove heatland in order to be able to communicate with policy makers how to deal with this ecosystem for climate change adaptation as well. So last year we worked very intensively in Indonesia and this year we tried to work with colleagues in Vietnam and perhaps also in India. This is the Orissa state mentioned by Antik earlier. And also in Africa and my colleague is right now working in, in Latin America. So we try to capture all the information dealing with wetlands, especially wetland and mangrove in these tropical countries as far as Twin Cannon is concerned. So 
one of my objective or personal intention to come over here really is to, to talk with colleagues in Bangladesh if we can um, develop a collaborative research next year on well then it's just very between them. We have a lot of uh, space to work together. Uh, I'm sure and I know there are many institutions who are working in this particular area, especially in the student environment where my work is very important in this country. Last year we communicated with the UNFCCC uh, subsidiary body, the Substack, to try to convey again the message how important it is to link, to synergize climate change adaptation and mitigation through the uh, weather and ecosystem. We got very uh, attention from the community and we are invited by the IPCC, this is the, the scientific wing of the climate change, which was invited by the UNFCCC into wetlands, including wetlands and mangrove, in the next guidelines, which is going to be released in 2013, called the 2013 Superman of the 2006 guideline for greenhouse gases infantry. So we will have a new methodology in 2013 and we can include our mangroves and pitlands in our national inventory after 2020. So this is a good development in, as far as our science can influence the policy community at that level. We also work very hard with government in countries where we are working and also the local community as far as adaptation is concerned. Last year, we tried to convince government in Latin America, and we also managed to attract funding for research uh, in the UNFCCC Adaptation Fund Board, how adaptation can be funded for research. But at the end of the day, we expect also that the, this international body can also support adaptation action, as it was described by Ati, as far as Napa, uh, Lapa, etc. is concerned. We can do the same in Bangladesh, and I uh, invite the uh, big ads to, to work together and looking at this. Uh, Cartier is a research organization and also an education institution in uh, Costa Rica where we work with to cover Honduras, uh, Costa Rica, and uh, Guatemala. So I think as far as regional cooperation is concerned, we are, we are very keen to collaborate with any institution dealing with climate change. If you look at the mangrove, especially in Bangladesh, this is the single, the largest uh, single remaining block of mangrove forest. About 1 million hectares, or 10,000 kilometers square, including the ones in India, but 60% is in Bangladesh. It is threatened by climate change. But at the same time, it also has the potential to adapt, to respond to the changing climate, especially sea level rise. My colleague is, happened to be a Bangladeshi, who is based in the U.S., uh, Faiz Rahman, not Atik Rahman, <laughs> your brother. Uh, looking at this uh, phenomenon in the last 40 years, how climate change has been affecting Bangladesh, by uh, using or adopting a method called spatial uh, temporal kind of approach to look at the change in the mangrove cover in Bangladesh. And it turns out that the double pressure faced by the mangrove in the Sudaban because of the erratic flooding from the mountain as well as sea level rise due to the changing climate, extreme climate causing an erosion of something like 140 square kilometers in the last 40 years. This is very, very alarming and serious problem for countries like Bangladesh, Indonesia and the like, where low-lying coastal zones are very prone to sea level rise. So, what to do next? This is a picture from Shilibar hiding but uh, looking forward what to do next. Uh, climate change mitigation certainly has been widely recognized than adaptation. This is very much of a 
concern. Many negotiators, even if they come from the same country, they don't talk to each other. They could use the talk when adaptation and mitigation are discussed. They go to the negotiation and go back to the country and work in their own corner. So, again, this is very important to help how to synergize the two. Uh, and it is not an option. It must. The adaptation has to be synergized with mitigation. And wetland has have a very huge potential in both adaptation and mitigation. We have this particular ecosystem in many developing countries, in many tropical countries, including Bangladesh, also in Indonesia, as far as we found. So it is important that scientific community trying to, to see how to convey uh, the message to policymakers as well, as far as we uh, all find this concern. And at the end of the day, we expect to be able to attract business community like this uh, group uh, to really play their role if they really see the opportunity we have to 